So hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm Kim Tolson. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, and I have my own online private practice. So let me go ahead and flip here. I want to tell you a little bit about me. So this is the traveling therapist and the insurance billing expert. So in addition to having my private practice, I also travel the world as a digital nomad. COVID slowed me down a little bit, but I do have a practice of about 15 clients right now. I do travel the world and I also teach insurance billing to therapists and now to VAs. So I just want to tell you a little bit more about all of that. I used to have billers doing all of my billing and they took about 9% of every claim that they filed for me. And I really didn't mind paying it because it was a relief to not have to worry about that part of my business. But eventually I realized that they were not collecting the money I was owed from my clients. They weren't telling me the correct co-pays and deductible amount that the clients were supposed to be paying me. So I wasn't collecting the right amount. I didn't even know that they were billing lower codes for some of my services. I was losing a lot of money that way. With mental health billing, sometimes you need authorization for certain codes. So this billing company, instead of going and getting the authorizations for the higher paying codes, they just weren't doing it and they were billing the lower codes. I had no idea until you know, later when I started taking over my own billing, I realized that they were doing that too. So needless to say, I was losing a lot of money after some investigation with the billers, I was actually staring at a 10-year-old $12,000 back balance report. Um, that was really the final straw for me when I saw that report. I just could not believe it. Uh, $12,000 was a lot of money. I had to learn how to bill insurance on my own after that. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out insurance. First, it was for my brick and mortar office because I was still in my office back then. And then it was for my all online therapy practice when I decided to become a digital nomad. So through trial and error, I learned pretty much everything you know, need to know about implementing insurance billing in your private practice. I've developed courses and a membership to help therapists become empowered and educated to do their own billing. I've coached over 450 therapists to do their own billing to this point since 2018. So now... They've been grateful to learn and they've saved a ton of money. But what I keep hearing over and over now is, Kim, now that I know what I'm doing, I need a trusted VA or admin assistant to do it for me because I just don't have the time. I now know what to look for, but I need to scale up my business. I need to hire someone who knows what they're doing, someone I can trust, and someone I know will get me paid quickly and efficiently. So that's where you guys come in. I've become really passionate about training VAs and admins to do the billing the right way. So I get asked maybe five times a day to recommend a VA or an admin assistant that can take over the billing for my students or just even people that realize I'm, you know, teaching about insurance billing. They'll reach out to me and ask me this question. So let me go ahead and go to the next slide here. Let's see. So. The number one question I get asked by VAs is, do I need to be certified to be a biller? So right now, there are no regulatory standards requiring certification at this time for people to do billing with the insurance companies. You will want to establish a business entity and have liability insurance to protect yourself, but you do not need to be certified to be a biller. As far as billing goes, anyone can do it. I do my own billing and you can do it too for therapists if that's what you want to do. There's no restrictions on this. Uh, once you learn the fundamentals about insurance billing, particularly for mental health, it's really just rinse and repeat after that. So you just, um, you know, once you learn it, you, you've got it and it's not really going to change much from there. There's like some core principles that you need to learn in the beginning. And then after that, it's pretty easy to do it. There are a few things that come up from time to time, but it's all fixable stuff. It's all stuff that you can go in and resubmit claims for or find a new system to make sure that it doesn't keep happening. So I've created a free Facebook group with over 7,000 therapists, VAs, and billers. In addition, I created a membership community that offers the support of myself and an expert biller each month and a VA to help with systems in, within the membership. 
So now for you guys, if some of you do want to get certified in billing, if you do think that, you know what, I'm hearing you, Kim, I don't need to be certified, but I think it would be better for my career to actually have the certification that I would direct you to go towards the AAPC.com. That stands for Advancing the Business of Healthcare, and they will certify you in behavioral health billing. There's some other ones out there, but that's the best that I found. And that would probably be where I would recommend for you to go if you want to do that. But hear me loud and clear. You do not need to be certified in this to, to do this. Let me go ahead to the next slide. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, there we go. Okay. So next, what are the reasons therapists want VAs and admins to bill for them? Um, a lot of VAs, VAs will say, Kim, if you're doing it yourself, what does a therapist need me for? But let me, let me tell you, a lot of therapists need this. The following reasons are really important for therapists and also will give you insight into your own marketing as a VA biller. So this will help in your marketing, like knowing these core things that therapists are looking for. Uh, one, time. So many therapists see 20 to 30 clients a week, sometimes more. They don't want to think about calling the insurance company and checking benefits or following up on claim denials. The next thing is confusion. So we are not trained in graduate school to build insurance at all. In fact, in graduate school, they pretty much teach us to go work for an agency and not even worry about that stuff. It's a confusing topic for a lot of therapists. They just don't understand the fundamentals of billing. So it, it can be really confusing for them. And the next thing is they don't want to learn something new. So therapists are required to earn CEUs, uh, which are clinical education units for learning. Every year we have to do that to keep our licenses active. For me as an LCSW, I have to have, what is it, 30 every two years. So it, it's a lot to keep up with, uh, the active learning that you have to do as a therapist to keep your license. And it's hard for therapists with full caseloads and trying to get CEUs to find the time to learn billing when we already have to focus on CEUs and just kind of keep it up with our clients. Next, it's too complicated for therapists, usually. Many therapists believe Billing is just too complicated for them. It reminds them of math, <laughs> you know, and most therapists are not good at math. So when they, when they even think about it, it just feels close to like statistics and math and they run for the hills. So that's another reason. Um, lastly, and most importantly, they want a trusted person. So literally almost every day, someone messages me with this biller horror story and they're panicking and they say they need my help to sort it out. And they just really need people who know what they're doing and will do a good job for them. That's where you guys come in. Okay. So let me go ahead to the next slide here. Let's see. Okay. So next, this is a really long topic. I don't want to get into it too much, but I did want to touch on it just so you know protecting yourself if you're getting into this field. So uh, uh, like I said, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I felt it was worth mentioning. Just a brief overview, HIPAA stands for Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. HIPAA includes many new rules that healthcare organizations must follow to ensure the privacy of patients is being protected. It's sensitive data and it's kept secure at all times. And you as a biller working with that information needs to know how to keep it protected. Um, because if you violate HIPAA, it could open up a lawsuit for you or your therapist that you're billing for. A lot of problems could happen because of that. So you're going to be want to be really well versed in that before you get into this niche with mental health billing or any medical billing, really. You need to know about HIPAA and how to keep uh, patient information secure at all times. If you're going to work with any providers that must protect client information, you'll need to know about this. So let's see. Next, you'll want to have great policies in place to ensure healthy boundaries with your clients. So you're going to want to decide your, your billing standards. Like how far do you want to go? Do you want to be a biller that calls and checks insurance benefits for the therapist? That's something you're going to have to decide up front because that is one thing that is a little bit time consuming. It could involve being on hold, 
And some billers don't do it. Some billers say, Hey, that's the responsibility of my clinician and they'll give me the information and I'll go from there. The claim gets denied, gets denied other billers. And this is how I would recommend you do it. Do you take on that responsibility? Because that's really what starts the whole process. So if you find out the client's benefits up front, 98% of claim issues are going to be resolved right there. You're going to find out if the policy is active. You're going to find out what the policy covers. You're going to find out what the copay is, the deductible, all of that. So it gives you a little bit more control. But I just want to use that as one example because there's so many examples around this that you're going to have to make decisions around and make sure you have it in your paperwork, what you will and won't do as a biller. My course covers probably about 50 different services that you could do for mental health clinicians. And it gives you an opportunity to look and see, uh, you know, what do I want to offer and not offer as far as the billing goes, or just like trying to help a clinician run their online practice. So lastly, you'll want to obtain liability insurance for your business, like just the basics of starting your own business. You do want to get liability insurance because, What if a clinician says, oh my gosh, this claim's denied. I'm going to sue you because these claims are denied. You know, you're going to want to have insurance around that. Hopefully you're going to have great processes in place so you can explain why it was denied. And and that's an extreme example, but I just wanted to point that out. Any business you have, you need to have liability insurance in your business. Let's see. Let me go to the next slide here. Okay. So I want to touch on understanding the basics of mental health billing. So I want to briefly cover some common concepts in behavioral health billing. I want to give you a brief overview of some of the lingo that is very common in this mental health billing field. So the first is CPT codes. CPT codes stands for current procedural terminology, CPT codes. And are, they're numbers, basically, they are assigned to every task and service a medical uh, health care provider may provide to a patient, including medical, surgical, diagnostic services, mental health, psychiatric services, all of that. They're used by insurance companies to determine the amount of reimbursement that a health care provider will receive by an insurer for that service. So CPT codes are the core of insurance billing. You're going to need to know these codes. And luckily with mental health, there's about, you know, 15 CPT codes that are really important. And once you get those, that's pretty much it. You pretty much got it at that point. So that's the good news. And that's what I was talking about, the rinse and repeat. Almost all clinicians are going to be billing the same codes and you're going to get used to it really quickly, which, which each of those codes are. The next that I want to tell you about are ICD-10 codes. So ICD-10 codes are alphanumeric codes used by doctors, therapists, um, public health agencies all over the globe to represent different diagnoses. So every disease, every injury, every symptom, it all has their own ICD-10 code connected to it. So this is how a clinician would diagnose a client. Basically, we would say, excuse me, we would say, you know, this client looks like they've got generalized anxiety disorder. And we go and get the code and we're going to provide that code to our biller. And the biller is going to put that on the claim form so the insurance company knows what the diagnosis code is, what's being treated by this clinician. So ICD-10 codes are used for for everything from processing health insurance claims to tracking disease epidemics, compiling statistics around the world, all the health insurance, portability and accountability act or HIPAA, as we were talking about before, covered organizations must comply with the ICD-10 codes. And this is instructed by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. So that's a brief brief summary. And there are some very common ICD-10 codes that mental health clinicians use on a regular basis, and you'll get really used to those as well. The next thing I want to tell you about is the HICFA 1500 form. So this is the claim form. It stands for Healthcare Finance Administration Form. That's the HICFA, H-C-F-A. So this form is used to document medical procedures, 
in essence, it's a claims form that the medical professional or the medical office completes and submits to the health insurance company. It's important that this form is completed with as much detail as possible to maximize the likelihood of the health insurance company approving it and paying for the claim. So of course I can't get into this, but there every, every block on the HICPA form, I think there's 33 boxes and each box means something different. You're gonna need to know exactly what each box stands for because let's say, let's say you need to resubmit a claim because the clinician made an error and said, oh my gosh, I put the wrong diagnosis and you need to go resubmit the claim. So there's a box for that. You would go, you would edit the claim, you would use the resubmission box, you'd click that, you'd enter the old claim number and you'd resubmit it to the insurance company. So each box on that form means something. And of course I can't go over it all today, but it, there's a lot to it. But once you get that and you know what each box means, you're good to go with that as well. The next thing I want to tell you about is copay. So a copay is a fixed out-of-pocket amount paid by an insurer for covered services. It's a standard part of many health insurance plans, insurance providers. They often charge copays for services because that's what the insurance plan requires. So it'll be the service is $100, but your copay is 25%. So you have to pay $25 for this service. So that's how co-pays work. You guys probably know about those with your own insurance plans. They are specified to a dollar amount usually rather than a percentage, but sometimes they're percentages. Usually it's like $25, $30, something like that. So I hope that explains co-pays a little bit. The next thing you're going to want to know about are deductibles. And deductibles are the amount you pay for covered healthcare services before your insurance plan starts to pay. So for example, my insurance, my personal insurance policy, I pay like $450 a month, which is really high. It's terrible. I have like a $6,000 deductible. So I'm paying my premium and my, and, and I've got this deductible. So my health insurance benefits, even though I'm paying a premium each month does not kick in and cover um, my services until I meet that deductible. So this is another really important thing that you're going to want to know about when you're calling and checking insurance benefits for the clinicians and for their clients. The last one I just want to touch on is coinsurance. This is another benefit issue that you're going to learn about when you call to check benefits. Coinsurance sometimes is also part of the plan, and that's the percentage of cost of a covered healthcare service and you would pay like, for example, that's like a 20% coinsurance after the person's met their deductible. So usually when there's a deductible, there could be a coinsurance that then comes in. And sometimes there's a deductible coinsurance and a copay. So it can get a little complicated, but again, I've got formulas for all that written out for you in the course. But I just wanted you guys to know those little beginner like lingo that goes along with mental health billing to get you started if this is the direction you want to take your career. So let's see, let me go over here and let's see, let me go to the next slide here. Oh, let me, okay. So this next slide. So for, for VAs, what you really need to know is what do therapists want to know from you if you're doing their billing? Basically, they want you to do all of it behind the scenes, but they are going to need to know benefits and coverage information. Um, because as I was saying in the beginning, we almost always are collecting that from our client at the end of the session, some therapists build at the beginning. So if it's a $25 copay, we're going to need to know that up front. So you're going to have to develop a system to get the client's information and then call and check benefits and then relay that information back to the therapist you're going to need to know that process. You're going to have to get the benefits somehow. You're going to have to call and check. You're going to have to relay that information to either the client or the therapist. The therapist is going to need to know what to bill before or after the session. Next, if they are a telehealth therapist, they are going to need you to call and check and make sure telehealth is covered. Telehealth is, you know, it's, it's pretty prominent right now because of COVID and the pandemic. But before that, Pre-pandemic, some of the insurance companies did not cover telehealth. And a lot of us that have just online telehealth practices are concerned about that, that it's going to go away after the, the uh, pandemic is over, whenever that is. 
but you're going to need to check that every single time you call about a policy. Is telehealth covered? And there's a lot of nuances to that. I don't have time to go into it today, but you definitely going to want to know that up front if your therapist is working via telehealth, like through video and not in person in the office. So it's going to be real important to know that. The other thing the therapist is going to want to know is how much do you need to collect from the client? Like I was saying before, basically we need to know that stuff, but we don't collect it up front or at the time of the session, we might not ever get paid. So, you know, the client might not come back, their credit card on file might expire. You know, there's all kinds of things that could happen. So we really want to know that up front and be able to collect that from the client at the time of service if we can, especially if it's a deductible. If it's a deductible, you know, us as the clinicians, we're going to need to collect the entire contracted rate up front from the client. So if the insurance company pays us $150 for a session, the client has $160 or $1,600 deductible that hasn't been met yet, we're going to need to collect $150 from the client before the insurance is going to start paying us. So the clinician is really going to want to know that up front. So I just want to emphasize that. Those are the really the important things you're going to have to know and have a system to give back to the clinician so they know what's going on with each and every client. Okay, so let me go on to the next slide. Let's see. Okay. So this slide, let's see. How much can I make doing mental health billing? So this really depends on the model that you want to follow. So you can bill by a percentage of each claim that is submitted and paid to the clinician. You can bill on a monthly fee where you could say, hey, for you know, $250 a month, I'll do all your claims and I'll take care of it. Or you can do it by hours spent billing. So the decision's up to you what you want to do. Most therapists really want a biller to charge a percentage of each claim that they've collected and gotten paid for. Usually um, that percentage is between 4 to 12%. I've seen that range of what billers bill. Mine were billing 9% of each claim that they actually got paid on. And let's see how much did I, I paid them. I saw about 30 to 40 clients a week and I paid them about $1,200 a month. And now that I'm doing my own billing, I see that that was like a great deal for them. And I'm telling you that. So, you know, that that's probably a great deal for you because it takes me about 30 minutes a week to do my insurance billing. And that's it. I rarely have problems with it. There's the occasional thing that comes up, but it's just like really rare that anything happens. And that's probably going to be your experience too. So once I figured that out, I was like, oh my gosh, that was a lot of money I was spending. Um, but it was good to have them for some things too, because they could follow up when there were problems. And now I have to deal with that myself. So, um, you know, that's just an estimate for you. If you're charging around 9%, the, cl the clinician sees 30 clients a week you're probably going to make about $1,200 a month off of that clinician. And if you have, you know, 10 clinicians that you could make, you could actually make a ton of money doing it on a percentage basis. So that's what I would recommend. And probably what most clinicians are going to expect if they hire you. Let's see what else. I don't want to tell you guys about this. So also I just wanted to mention like on top of like the claims that are paid, you can choose to charge for other services. So in my course, I detail a lot of different services that you can add on like packages. So you could charge, you know, a percentage of the claims, but then you could say, well, you know, I also charge 200 a month to do insurance verifications, which is what I was talking about before we actually call the insurance information and, and get all of the client's insurance information up front. So you could say, you know, I take a percentage of the claims, but I also charge a flat 200 a month to, to call and check these benefits. Um, you'll have to figure out how much you want to charge for stuff like that. But I've listed, like I said, about like 50 different services you can offer that clinicians really need. And you can upcharge for all that stuff. You can make additional packages. I've seen a lot of billers do it that way. So you know, it, this is a lucrative business if you can get past that initial learning curve. And then, like I said, it's really rinse and repeat and just figuring out, you know, what you want your systems to look like. 
So, okay, let me go to the next slide here. Let's see. Okay. Um, so I touched on this a little bit, but I just want to talk about like smart systems to streamline the billing process for you. So for any VA that's going to be getting into this field, I would recommend learning specific EHRs. EHRs are electronic health records. Um, it's where clinicians keep all of their client information and do their insurance billing. Some of the most popular EHRs are Simple Practice, Therapy Notes, Theranest, and that's just a couple. That's the ones that most clinicians are using that I see. There's some other ones. And a lot of times, once you learn the, the big ones, the other ones are pretty intuitive. You'll probably be able to figure it out if you need to. Some mental health billers, VAs, and admin assistants will specialize in a certain platform. So simple practice, I think simple practice is probably the most used EHR and maybe therapy notes. Those two are a tight run there for, for which one's got more users. I'm not really sure, but those are the two that you run across the most. Um, so in your practice, you're probably going to want to specialize or, or learn a couple of these. You can um, start to develop a streamlined process. You know, once you figure out these HRs to check client benefits, and then you enter them into the electronic health records that the clinician is using. Again, this is all in my course. And if you want, I can give you a copy of my insurance verification form. Just put down in the comments below if you'd like one. Just give me your email address and I'll send you a copy of that insurance verification form because that... That is key to all of this. Like you're going to need to know every single question to ask when you call the insurance company. So I'm happy to share that with you guys. Just let me know if you need it, if you want it. Another thing you're going to want to need to know about like systems is providing the clinician with the correct amount to collect from the client. So I said this before, but I just want to touch on it again. You'll need to gather this information when you obtain the benefits for the clinician. And that, again, is on that insurance benefits verification form that I said I would give you guys if you'd like a copy. I would recommend choosing like one time a week or, uh, you know, uh, at one time during the day to complete all the billing in bulk. So a lot of billers will, you know, say, oh, I, I file claims every day at five o'clock or the next morning I go through and file all the claims from the day before. So you're going to want to just like set aside a block to do it. You don't want to be like, like every 20 minutes. Oh, here comes oh, another clinician just finished a session. Let me go. Let me go bill for it right now. It's, it's smarter to put these systems in place where you're doing, doing things in blocks. It's a more effective way to get tasks done just in general, but for billing, I would recommend that. So like I said, set aside a time each week for the billing, set aside a time each week to follow up any denials that you might have, any claim rejections that might come up. And as I said before, if you do a really thorough job up front, you're not going to really run into those problems very often, but I would still encourage you to set some time aside for that. Okay, so let me go into the next one here. So where can you learn mental health billing for mental health clinicians? One is my free Facebook group. I do have a free Facebook group. It's got over 7,000 members. It's got billers, VAs, therapists. I'm in there. You know, we're all in there helping each other. So that's a great place to start. And I'll drop that link at the end of this presentation for you. It's insurance billing for telehealth practitioners on Facebook. So you're welcome to go join that group. And then a lot of the EHRs, like Simple Practice, for example, they have tutorials on different topics. So, you know, if you're like, oh, I don't know, this, this, I did this insurance verification and now they want to know what is, what is an, I need an authorization for this service or whatever. I have no idea how to do that. So a lot of times you can go like to Simple Practice or whichever EHR and look that up and they'll give you like a little tutorial on how to do that stuff. So that's, those are really important things to know. And then let me go to this next slide and let's see here. Okay. The other places to learn is one, my mental health billing 101 for virtual assistants and admin assistants. It's being released in a couple of weeks. I'm so excited about it. I really put a lot of work into this. I think you guys are going to love it. And the other thing is my support community. It's called Bill Like a Boss. So 
I touched on this in the beginning, but I did develop a support community that is a supplement to my therapist billing course that I created. And now we've got VAs and billers in there as well. So it's a nice mix in there. The support community is myself, uh, expert biller that's been doing it for 20, 30 years. And we're in there 24 seven answering questions. We have live meetings three times a month where you can jump in my Zoom room live with us and we will help you through anything you've got going on. Also, you can post... You can post in the group anytime you've got anything going on. So the billers are just like on standby. I'm on standby. If something comes up, you don't know how to deal with it. You just post it in there and we will help you. Or if it's complicated and you want to wait till the next live meeting with us, we'll, you know, be having it in the next week or so. Cause it's, we do it like on a rotating monthly basis. So there's three meetings every month that are live. So that's another way that you can get support and learn more about this too. If you don't feel like you need the course, you just need the membership for support. We've got that. We've also got the course and the membership together, like in a lifetime package. So there's lots of options for this. And then, as I was saying before, the free Facebook group is also a great resource. So let me go over to this next slide here. Let's see. Okay. So this is something else that a lot of VAs ask me is how am I going to market myself? So therapist Facebook groups, you can join those. Every one of those groups has like a promo day where you can, you know, enter your information and say, hey, I'm a biller. You know, if you need my help, here's what I can offer. Um, Instagram accounts that allow marketing, that sort of thing. You could sign up for those. You can ask to be on therapist podcast to share helpful tips about your services. So if you go over to the app store or and, and look at all the podcasts. There's like a million therapist podcasts. So you can look for ones that have got a lot of followers and you can, you know, scroll to the contact me and you can just put together a presentation like this and ask the person that's doing the podcast, hey, can I come on and tell your, you know, your listeners how to strategically check benefits or something like that. So you can do that. You can offer discovery calls and free audits of the clinician's current systems to help offer more effective ways to help in exchange for maybe a testimonial. So, hey, so, hey, I'll give you this audit for free. If you think I do a good job and you want to work with me, great. Or, hey, could you give me a testimonial and just say that, you know, it was a really thorough audit for you and you could post that on your website. So that's another way. And what is this other one? I've got helpful and educational content via an email list or on a business page or account. So this is, you know, writing blog posts on your website that when people Google search certain terms, they're going to find your information, your blog, that could be really helpful. Um, you can have an email sign up list where you're sending out helpful tips and tricks for organization and structure and billing tips and all of that. You can send that out weekly or monthly, or however often you want to do that. And then the last thing I would recommend is something I'm also launching in the next couple of weeks. It's my virtual assistant slash biller directory. There's no like comprehensive VA slash biller directory out there that I've been able to find. So I decided to make one. And we are now currently accepting applications to be on that directory. And you don't have to even be a mental health uh, VA. You can be any kind of VA because I get these questions all the time. Hey, Kim, do you know anybody that does good copywriting? Or do you know anybody that can help me build my website? Or do you know anybody that can organize my files on my computer? I mean, I get all kinds of questions. So we're going to have a lot of VA categories on here. And one of the categories is going to be mental health VA billers, because as I said before, I get asked this all the time. So if you want to be on the wait list for that, I will drop the link also in the comments and you can come join the VA directory when it launches. I think it's probably going to launch in about three or four weeks. So I hope you guys will check that out as well. And that's all I have. I know that was a ton of information, but I'm here. If you have questions about anything, if you need me to follow up on something, I look forward to connecting with you. If you want to get on the wait list for the course or the billers directory, 
let me know. I'm going to drop all the links so you have them. But I just want to say thank you for joining me today. I think that this service is really needed for therapists and all the other services that I mentioned. As I said, I get questions all the time about who can I recommend. So if you think this is a career path for you and you want to learn this, I had this course. I've poured my heart and soul into it, um, really, because I do not want other therapists to get bad billers like I did. So it's kind of my goal now to make sure I'm training VAs to be good billers so therapists can do good work with their clients and so on and so on. So that's really one of the big reasons that I even decided to make this course to begin with. So anyway, grab a spot on the early bird wait list. We're going to have bonuses and discounts if you sign up early on the wait list. Okay. So thank you very much. Take care and I hope you guys have a great day.